Listen. Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, episode 428. I'm your host, Zachary Ryan, and today I'm joined by Parrish Schneider, hey. Brian Altano, hey. and who is this? It's Craig Harris. How's what? It going, guys? What's hey, happening, Craig? Craig? Oh, okay. Haven't seen you in a while. It's been, what, seven years? That's a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, actually, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if we've actually met. Yeah, I said I haven't seen you in a while, but then <laughs> I realized that we've never actually yeah. met in person, so um, I've never seen you before, but it is Great. good to it's good to have you on the show, Thank man. Thank you so much. Craig, Former, welcome back. Former host of NBC, I, I did a few episodes with you way back yeah. in the day. You ran a, t a tight ship. Yeah. I think we, well, do, we I think we, we do now. We have an agenda, and this is something I've never done. So like, yeah. you yeah. actually handed this to me. I'm like, oh my god, here's a, a run of here's shows. A great, uh, <laughs> BTS moment. I, I walked in. Uh, Craig was capturing some uh, Starlink footage for us, and I walked in. And I was like, hey, just wanted to give you this, and he goes. What is what? this? Yeah. <laughs> what is, what is, oh, what okay. is this? Yeah. This is how we're going to do the show. This is a tight ship. Uh, mm -hmm. looking, at my, looking at my runner show, I see here that I do have some uh, updated copy for you guys. I, I you know, uh, Occasionally, I'm contractually obligated to read some things for IGN.com. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Uh, come celebrate the year in games with IGN at our Fan Fest presented by Fruit Loops. Your favorite game makers, streamers, and game personalities will all be there, and you'll want to join us. Friday, December 7th in Los Angeles. Stay tuned for more details on how you can be part of the action. I didn't even look at the camera when I was reading that. Oh. I just read it straight ahead. That's my first <laughs> time hearing about this, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, we haven't announced it yet. By the time this show goes live, we will have announced it. So Got it. you guys are getting a little it's sneak part of the, uh, you know, the Game Award uh, Awards are in town that uh, that day, so people are coming out for it. So we figured we'd throw a little uh, fan meet and greet. All right. Yeah. Do you, are you serving time. Fruit Loops at this event? Oh, I'm sure they'll be. be I can't imagine a better party to go to than one where people are just eating a bunch of Fruit Loops. Yeah. Right. That sounds like a really good time. <laughs> I agree. Yep. Totally agree. Uh, we have an action packed show uh, today. Obviously, one of the first things that we're going to talk about Craig has just finished up the review for Starlink Battle for Atlas. My first review in seven years. I think. Oh, God. I think my last review was uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. <laughs> okay. On, on well, that's brand new. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a little, a little rusty, but right. um, I thought this was a really, really cool review to get into right on yeah. yeah yeah we're happy that you reviewed it for us and uh we're gonna dig right in here so let's nice. let's go ahead and talk about uh you know i, I played this game at, at gamescom a few months ago it was really taken aback at how fluid and fun it is yeah. um let's start with your score you gave it a 7.0 7.0 yes. which on the ign scale good good it's, mm -hmm. it's a good it game. is a it is a, a good good game um actually my introduction to the game i actually wasn't even following starlink when it was first in that, what, what two or three years ago right mm -hmm. and then at e3 when they showed the trailer and then they cut to Star Fox, yeah. I was like, oh my god. That, right. like, I, uh, Perry can tell you, I'm like a huge Star Fox. Yep. Mm. Well, so, I think it was you and every Nintendo fan was like, this looks cool. Star Fox, okay, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's it's a very generic name, right? Star Fox. Sure. It's like, oh, but then when they actually added Star Fox to it, I think it it legitimized it more than anything else, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it actually gave it a, a franchise to latch onto. Mm -hmm. um, so, but keep in mind that this isn't a Star Fox game. This mm -hmm. is a this is a game that has Star Fox in it, mm -hmm. so um, it's it's kind of like you describe it as a No Man's Sky yeah. game with a story. It's less about exploring like the vast uh, vastness of space. It's yeah. more about following a story, but you can fly from planet to space and all of that, right? And it pretty much it uses No Man's Sky as like a basis for its mm -hmm. game design. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's really impressive the way you can kind of scurry across the ground yep. and then like open up your wings and fly straight off into the stratosphere and out into space, Super head to another planet, and it's all. Seamless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very I mean, impressive. Stuff. I mean, obviously, like No Man's Sky took its thunder, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure that this game wouldn't exist if No Man's Sky didn't exist. Right. But a lot of the, a lot of the game design is what No Man's Sky does. It also they, doesn't bring a lot of the baggage that that game <laughs> had with it, uh, or you know, or, or sort of save the universe lofty expectations. I, I noticed that with this game too. I tweeted about that this morning about how it takes some of my favorite parts of No Man's Sky, like some of the the first time I found like this weird creature on this bizarre planet, uh, and then it have it has you scan it by rotating your ship in a circle around it yeah. and filling in these little orbs. I was like, that's really smart. And there's like it's you know minor resource gathering stuff. Like mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed the scanning part. Usually yeah. that's a that's a that's an element in games I absolutely hate, even in like. Metroid Prime, when you have to scan everything, I mm -hmm. hated How it. dare you? Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> There's a trap door underneath yeah, we will your chair. Sorry. I, I didn't say Metroid Prime was bad. I just under, I under like my reign of NVC, we will not hear a disparaging word against Zach's, Metroid Prime. Zach's favorite genre is first person scanner. Yeah, okay. that's Please true. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. But yeah, they, I think they incorporated it well in the game because you never really break out of the thrusting around the planet when you mm -hmm. actually scan things. And then they actually add, because like sometimes you'll scare the, 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 the animal away and you have to kind of chase it down or mm -hmm. it'll have like a corruption on that you have to pluck before you can scan it which is actually really cool too so that was a really cool element um I'm trying to think of some of the things that uh, uh that you would play in this game um well I think what what 
specifically what makes this we talked about the Star Fox angle and I think what makes this really unique is like uh, this is sort of a second attempt at a Star Fox game by a th like it's not a Star Fox game <laughs> it's but like not. it's a second attempt at, at at putting Star Fox in the hands of somebody else right, right. so we saw um, Platinum take on Star Fox and on Namco the Wii U before that. and yeah. Nam oh, that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. and Nam yeah. so it's a third attempt actually yeah. it, and this might be the closest that we've gotten to success with like branching out and handing that off because like neither of those games are great I totally so. agree this is also this is the mm. second time that Nintendo has been like hey Ubisoft can you babysit for a little <laughs> while yeah and then they come home and they're like your, the kids are okay. Or the other yeah. way around, that yeah. Yubi was so excited about integrating the character that yeah. pitched it yeah. and, and convinced them, right? It's done with so, with a lot of love, too. I mean, yeah. like yep. they, they, all the voice, all the voices are in the game. So it's you can a, see the ships right here. Yeah, the ships are great. And they, cuts the, 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 the characters have never looked better, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like they look so great in this game. And they actually incorporate it throughout, like the, uh, over the course of like a, a 20 hour experience, you'll see a like lots of ni nice little cutscenes that have mm -hmm. uh, the the Star Fox characters, and it's just great. Yeah, I actually uh, was pretty surprised at that because when I started playing it, I thought Star Fox would just show up mm -hmm. or be just like a sort of like an extra character. I just thought like he was just <laughs> scannable, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was yeah. just like they gave him some VO, and he was just yeah. like no barrel, but like they bring in Slippy and yeah. Peppy. That and was like that was the thing that really impressed <laughs> me from their their E3 presentation because this. Let's go back to when this game was first announced. Uh, I I want to say it was E3 2016 yes. uh, was when the reveal happened, and it it was a very interesting thing because here's a toys to life game. <laughs> on the Nintendo Switch, or not even on the Switch yeah. at that point. Uh, th they weren't talking about platforms, but Toys to Life game at the end of an age, uh, at the end of a Toys to Life era, right? Yeah. Like all the other Toys to Life games had fallen off. So it to us, it seemed like maybe they were a little remiss in, in banking on this one form factor. Well, yeah. Not only did we see the Toys to Life genre fizzle out, but we saw it fizzle out while attached to some of the most biggest, properties. biggest IPs yeah. in the history of toys. Disney, right. Star Wars, yeah. Lego, Lego. Yeah, all that. everything. Yeah. Everything, like, everyone tried. Even, like, the we had seen around that time, that was when you would go to a store and just see, like, Animal Crossing Amiibo everywhere that were, like, basically, yeah. you know, pennied out. Um, yeah. And that I, I feel like, ultimately, that dooms it. The, the core game is fun. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not as far as you, and you say it gets more repetitive later but like what attracted me was first the the toys angle yeah and not not the other ships but Shocker. the but the r wing right mm -hmm. and like this is the weirdest toys to life <laughs> game because you you have a fairly large ship and it has the little movable parts you have a pilot and you can dock your joy con into the stand and then put this ship on top and then you can play the game <laughs> like this with the now, ship now what impressed i like me about that. this what impressed me about <laughs> this is that when you dock your controllers there's no syncing up of that 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 ship dock it it yep. actually recognized it right away. You don't have to like do any sort of syncing or you know making sure that the system recognized it. It mm -hmm. was instantaneous. Now I didn't test how the Xbox and the PlayStation version works, mm -hmm. but with the the Switch, it was just slide your controllers in and it works. And there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I dig that. I also like I've been playing the digital version of it, and I haven't interfaced with any of the toys outside of the ones I've seen in the office. And the cool thing about this, uh, which I guess is like a good and bad thing, right? With Toys to Life, everyone's always trying to find that balance. Like, what am I buying? What am I? unlocking is it dlc i know nintendo struggled with that for a while with splatoon and stuff like that they would put out a trio of like inklings and you'd be like oh you can only get costumes through this and people felt like you know things were paywalled uh this game is totally playable without any of the toys which is the way i've been playing it i think it's cool that it's an option yeah but that's the thing it, it kind of kills it because it's an option right it's like yeah you know, why would you go out and spend Hundreds of dollars on these toys. Well, first of all, the, the the toys are very generic, right? I mean, like, the, and, and you know, it's the the R wing itself is the reason to get this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rest of them are, eh, you know. Well, for. Us, this is a panel of men in their thirties. You know, <laughs> like I, a child might yes. look at this. But you like that but pair? But the problem is, it's not, there's no franchise. <laughs> Did you a solid? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, who are you guys talking about? Okay, so that's the, that was that's the cool thing about these toys. It can recognize all these parts, right? Yeah. And it, but it also recognizes the, what direction those weapons are facing. Right. Oh, I can that, put them backwards. And that's yeah. the, that, that was a problem with when I was first reviewing. Like, why are my the flamethrowers firing backwards? I mean, like, because oh, I put the toys backwards. So oh. I flip it. So now you want the toys? Look at him! Look at him! <laughs> now he's kind of now you're it. stuck yeah. with yeah. A, you, your stupid digital edition yeah. yeah and you just got super jealous because i put nine wings on this r wing i have, I have a kid pair i have like 20 years i, I can justify toy purchases one extra part on the 
wings and the weapon that's attached to it. Whatever you're uh, making there, how, yeah. it won't read. Okay. <laughs> also, that's <laughs> maybe the least aerodynamic thing I've ever seen. Good luck <laughs> for getting, space. Good luck getting off the planet's surface in now that they, configuration. They put a lot of thought into the toys themselves. They're just they're just really generic, and for a, collect, a collector, there's no real franchise attached to it other than the Star Fox thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, back in the day when they did the Toys to Life, the, the first game that really kind of did it was was the Skylander series, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And even then, back then, Activision really wasn't convinced that it was a thing, so they attached Spyro, Spyro. To it, right. Right? right? So, was a, so that's kind of where I I see the the Star Fox connection, mm -hmm. right? It's like they really weren't hundred percent confident that this was going to be a thing, so they went to Nintendo and said, "Hey, can we?" Have yeah, I mean, it's it's it? a really really smart marriage. Yeah. I think it's a really like. Obviously, Nintendo and Ubisoft have something cooking, right? Like, they, they've got two successful iterations of Nintendo properties into Ubisoft franchises. Right. Uh, and it's really working to their, their success. Uh, the thing that, that struck me about this year at E3 uh, was when they're talking about, when they did the Star Fox reveal, they, they kind of went out of their way to say, like, it's not just Star Fox inserted into this game. Star Fox has a campaign. Star Fox yeah. like is integrated into the story in a way. Like if you choose to play as, as mm -hmm. this character, um, I will say that that just seeing walking past earlier today while you were capturing yeah. stuff and just seeing Star Fox and Slippy like in the midst of these like regular human people in the cutscenes was a little bit odd. No, it's well, kind of it cool. Actually, yeah, when you play it, it actually makes sense and they fit really well because there are a lot of aliens in the game that you meet up and some of them are like animal type characters. Yeah. So. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was like kind of disappointed at first when I hit uh, R twice and I didn't do a barrel roll and I'm like they're no, not here yeah. but you just hit A twice and it, it worked. It was a barrel so, roll yeah. that actually again, call it out. This is yeah. not a Star yeah. Fox game. It yeah. is a game with Star Fox in it. It's so. a it Star does. Fox game to me damn it. The, the, way, <laughs> the way it feels though like it it kind of sometimes feels like Star Wars uh, Star um, Fox the way yeah. the, the ship uh, handles yeah. but then like when you hit the after booster the, the ships are much heavier yeah. you know like. It, I mean it all depends on how you um, level up your ship too so like, okay. you put, add all these perks and stuff yep. like that and that's the thing that that um, pretty much, I mean, it made it very repetitive once I figured out the best perk for the game. And actually, um, I found like a weapon that, you know, weapon combo that really worked super well. Mm -hmm. And I just plowed through the game after once right, I figured right. that out. So that's, I think, one of the biggest problems with this I, game. I will say that, like, I don't, I don't know where the Star Fox franchise goes from here or if we'll get a sequel to this game. But I do like piloting an R-Wing that has mild RPG elements. Like, it was cool yeah. leveling stuff up, going into my menu and, like, kitting out cer certain, like, lasers and blasters and stuff like that. That all felt really fun. And the game... The way like you're interfacing with your ship is really toyetic, in the same way you're you're inter interfacing with the actual toys, which makes sense. It also looks gorgeous. It really does. The game just looks fantastic. Yeah, and I didn't realize this until uh, I was talking to Pear about it earlier today. But um, I guess you were saying that this game was developed for the Switch. It, it well, it's, developed, it's, it's basically the the switch is the lowest common denominator. So right. They said they wanted to make it look good on the lowest common denominator, and yeah. so like when they ported it or when they when they moved it to the other consoles, it's kind of taking like what that looks like, version. and it still looks pretty good on, yeah. on the mm -hmm. Xbox three, uh, Xbox One, and and PlayStation Four. So right. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great looking game on Switch, and it's a good looking game on Xbox One. And yeah. yeah. So you're giving it the Craig Harris seal of approval. And yeah, I, I I think it's worth going out for. I think. For Switch owners, they should buy that starter pack with the R Wing. Yeah. But if they're going to buy it on the Xbox One, PS4, get it digitally. Because right. Because honestly, there's actually this is this is actually a good uh, uh, Craig way. Uh, <laughs> into, uh, so something that that Tom Marks, who uh, couldn't be on the show today, but wanted us explicitly to talk about. He's like, hey, I need you guys to talk about this on the show. Um, there's a pretty major discrepancy between the digital versions and the physical versions, right? So Tom. He put an exhaustive report on our run of show. <laughs> God love him. Um, I'll, I think maybe I'll throw this into the uh, the description in the the article page for for this episode. But um, I'll just read his conclusions here. So, everything digital to buy everything in the game digital, it'll mm -hmm. cost you eighty dollars. Okay. But to buy everything physical in the game, like all of these accoutrements and more, two hundred and forty seven dollars. Yes. Yeah. So yes. you're looking at a pretty huge discrepancy, Lots pretty huge clutter. difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the base edition for uh, the base digital edition costs sixty dollars. The equivalent physical cost uh, is one hundred and ninety six. So that's the weird part. And right. I think most people will not understand what that means. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why that is? No, I only know what Tom wrote. Okay. So <laughs> the reason is when you buy the the starter kit, you get the R wing and right. you get one additional ship, right? Like the base ship. A digital version of the ship. And that's the thing that was really confusing when I was reviewing it because yeah. Ubisoft gave us the the physical version of the Switch version game, yep. but the code they gave us to download it was the digital edition which yeah. has a ton all the chips and weapons and stuff like that so i had to kind of play it 
right. physically. So yeah, the digital edition has multiple ships in right. it, whereas yeah. the physical one does not. Yeah. And so why that is important is if you're in a space battle and your R wing gets blown up, it says attach yeah. another ship <laughs> for, right. an, for another right. life. In Tom's, and yeah, if in you don't Tom's have it digitally, you're like, Dada. this matters because ships are lives mm -hmm. and the guns affect gameplay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at not maybe not a distinct disadvantage, but certainly a disadvantage when it comes so to. So in my reviews, itself. when I died, I I didn't do the whole um, extra ship thing. I just kind of went back to the last save point and just mm -hmm. continued on. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, okay. And his so his last note here is the uh, deluxe edition saves you approximately ten by uh, ten dollars over buying individually with the base edition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that this is a direct marketing ploy from Ubisoft and Nintendo to Per Schneider, um, a man yeah. with all of the Amiibo and, and all of the Joy-Con and just a dangerous addiction to collecting things. Yep. And I don't doubt that any expansions or, or additional ships that we might see... I couldn't even get him to start the show because he just wanted to play with these yeah. toys. I don't think so, there will be expansions. I, I, really, the ships I, are I don't really have cool. a lot of faith that the one. toys yeah, will yeah. actually sell. Uh, the R-Wing is awesome. Yep. I really mm -hmm. like it. I would we love very rarely get swag from Star Fox. Yeah, yeah. So like I think it's like one of the first R wings that you can get. I know that they, I think it was first four figures made an R wing giant yep. one that I have, but um, that's like the first articulated uh, yeah. R wing figure. So I think that's really cool. And uh, it's yeah. like they, you can't see this, but Fox is in here, right? You yeah. attach Fox to the those. Stand the little mini whoop. figures yeah. are really cool. And there's a little light in it too, which is not going to show up on mm -hmm. camera, but like the the uh, Joy-Con powers the afterburner. Now you made that's an cool. interesting note Whatever before the show is, started uh, about. Booster. Uh, about the uh, the lights on this ship, can you tell us? Um, can you tell us where that light is located? Yeah, what'd you say about yeah, that light? Yeah, what'd you say about it, Perry? The, the, the light up butthole. Yeah, okay, that that's what you said. Oh, that's uh, that's Craig, what it's called. NASA calls it. Thank that. you so much for reviewing Starlink for it us. Was my pleasure. Yeah, it's good to have you back in the thank fold. Um, also, a lot of news this week. Let's talk about it. Is First up, system update, like a big one that. No, I'm. I refuse to take okay. any news tips from you. Uh, uh, no, the first Six, big news uh, update six point zero point one zero two. We've got the Diablo three limited edition Switch console coming out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Perry, do you want to tell us a little bit about what that entails? Yeah, it's a limited edition version of the Switch console. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Did your homework thank on you. the no, bus? No, they actually they have a custom design on the dock. So yeah. you you have uh, you have characters on the front of the dock. Um, if you're watching the video version, you can you can see it here right. uh, and on the back of the system here. So. Oh, that's Ooh. interesting. They, we actually when you buy them, they burn in like that. Like cool, they appear. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, we haven't really seen a lot of limited edition Switch systems where they interface with the the back of the screen itself. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's just Joy-Con, right? Yep. Right. Interesting. Uh, I, I like that it's it's. On the dock, it's on the back of the switch. I think that's cool. Also, I think that this is a uh, this is a special edition just for goths. So yeah, it is a lot of goths okay. out there. Yeah, just getting there. Available at Hot Topic. Thank you for not making custom Joy-Con because because then you would have needed them. Would have had to buy another. What if like they're like a slightly different gray? Like a six point zero point one point two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll buy them. So how many how many limited editions do you have in the office right now for the switches? But switches, not, none have come out yet. More interesting like, question. Ask Pear how many Joy-Con he has. <laughs> I, yeah, I have all the colors. <laughs> the well, the secret he, is... He in, said so cavalier. Huh? I see yeah. he's actually modded his. With That's the, a mod. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I did, yeah. But no, the, uh, the there was a, a release, obviously, of the Mario colors, the darker red, in mm -hmm. a special edition, but they actually sold those separately in Japan. Mm, yeah. So that, unfortunately, is not as easy with some of the other editions coming out. I saw some pushback on this because it comes with a digital code for the game and not a physical copy mm -hmm. of the game, which seems weird for like a collector's edition. Yeah. But yeah, but you also get the converse of that where they send these elaborate uh, collector's edition uh, versions of games that don't have the game in it at all. Yeah. Plus, it's, and plus so, it's an online game that are probably going to be updating a lot. You know, so right. like to have a physical version of that when they have to patch it all the time. It's no, I know. I feel you. Tell me about it. I'm, I'm all digital. We've had, we've stuff. had, uh, exactly. We've had this debate on the show yeah. many times over the course of the I can add my two cents. Yes, I, please. I do not like physical games anymore. I prefer having the digital version on my system at all times. Right. I agree with you. Yeah. Good luck in the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I don't want to take that from them. Um, even though they're probably incorrect, but it's okay. Yeah. I do think it's interesting that this physical edition is coming to Switch where Diablo really hasn't had a presence on the Switch. No, it's also sort of nefarious that they have that little icon in the corner that says like exclusive Ganondorf because it makes it seem like the only way you can get it is through this bundle, mm -hmm. and that's not the case. You'll be able to buy it right. day and day when yeah, you get when you actually get yeah. the game. Yep. Um but yeah, it's cool. I mean, they're obviously trying to get people excited about this thing for the first time. Um, yeah. And Diablo is awesome, so I don't blame them. Yeah. I, I hope to see much more support from Blizzard. I'd the, love to get yeah. Hearthstone on uh, Nintendo Switch. And if this is the this, if this is the gateway to get there, like let you know, sure. 
That yeah, sounds that, great to me. Let's do it. Um, okay, here's a big one for this table, I'm sure. Uh, all Gen 4 Pokemon are now in Pokemon Go. Can't Thoughts? believe it. So that's why Andrew's <laughs> not in the office that's right That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, what level are you at, Mark? I don't even remember. I haven't played it in months. Who's your are favorite you still Gen playing? 4? I'm at 34. Okay. Um, I haven't played it in like three weeks, but I'll be going out this weekend. I think there's a community event this weekend, too. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew Goldfarb is, of course, our resident Pokemon Go expert, and when I checked in with him on the day that the Gen 4 characters dropped in Pokemon Go, he had already collected eight. So yep. off to a good start. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I, the, he had tears in his eyes. He was so like, happy. They were like little also, sparkly tears. It like. should be known that uh, after each generation comes to Pokemon Go, Andrew makes a very declarative statement to those of us that are worried about his health, and yeah. he says, "This is the last gen that I'm going to catch, and then yep. after this, I'll probably stop." And yeah. he never does. Zach, Zach and I are very close friends with Andrew, and we go, you know, with him for coffee walks and stuff mm. like that. I haven't like had a conversation with him out in the wild like face to face in literally years well, like it's not like it's just this it's, yeah. this. Yeah. it's just face in the phone yeah. he actually we, we talked about this in up at noon a while back but he fell he fell in the san francisco bay yeah, yeah. he, you know, he fell off a pier he fell off a pier <laughs> playing pokemon go <laughs> but so tweeted him and, and let him know that that was a great idea the fact that matter Garfet. is it brings the boy joy it does you know, can't, can't, can't take that for that him. and it's one of those things where like we get a lot of comments about Destiny. We get a lot of comments about Pokemon Go. They're like, people still play this game, mm. but those are two millions. Of the, yeah. Those yeah. are two of the highest traffic games on our website week over week. It's so mm -hmm. yes, absolutely, Go out people there still on play. A community it. Day and you'll yeah. be amazed at how many people are yeah. still playing. Honestly. Yeah, I see people on the bus yeah. every single day collecting Pokemon. Yep. So, um, okay, Fortnite adds tournaments. Uh, hey, guess what? Are you still Fortnite? playing? On the Switch, plain? I totally hung it up, and uh, I, I haven't really gone back to Fortnite. Who's <laughs> this, this? Here's Doctor Fortnite on yeah, TV. If you're Fortnite. watching, <laughs> um, Captain Tournament. No, uh, I, I hung up Fortnite in probably early September, and looking at the game Same. now, it's wild how different it is. There's so much new stuff. They're adding. There's there's continued support for their platform. I, I think it's really amazing what they're doing with it. Fortnite will forever be one of those games where I'll check in periodically once every quarter it, i'll jump back in and be like okay what's this all about it's it's, and it's nuts how much they support a free game mm -hmm. yeah you know just yeah. i mean that's the secret of the success and why people do spend money is you get so invested it constantly gets updated you know obviously splatoon 2 took the same route you know we've got a little halloween event coming up mm -hmm. in that one as well but but this game now this is adding a really big feature like a feature if any standalone multiplayer game got tournaments like that you'd be like this is a major major update and right. they're just kind of like casually slipping this out uh, one week. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've said this before, but I really in, I really like the way this game sort of scales how much you pay for mm -hmm. it. Because you can play it for free, you can drop a couple bucks in the season pass. During that season pass, you can basically unlock enough V-Bucks to purchase the next season pass for free if you play 20 hours a day, every day, for the rest of your life. <laughs> You'll save eight ninety nine. Um, so I, I like that. I think that's a good way of handling things. But like all this, all the stuff you buy is cosmetic, right? So it right. doesn't really. It's yeah. not like, like it's just a show off. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of games where you jump in and like you see dudes running around in that game, and they're just like in the coolest they superhero just costumes. Dance and show you. Up yeah, what they've it's got. a it's a good time. I really enjoy yeah. it. I did the same thing as Zach. I played it a ton, and then I just kind of dropped off. So I think I'll I'll jump back in eventually. Well, I started getting just roasted yeah. in that game. Like I was really. Pretty good at it when it first launched on Switch because I was playing with a lot of new players. It was I'd you, played. me, and a bunch of five-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I played a lot on PlayStation 4. but It's like Billy as, Madison. Yeah, as soon as I started getting like killed a lot, I was like, well, maybe it's yeah. time for me to hang it up. Yeah. yeah, I don't have time to actually invest in the game, so I haven't really put much time into Fortnite because mm -hmm. once you jump in and you get slaughtered, it's like, ah, eh, mm -hmm. I'm people, good. People love to hate on Fortnite right now because it's the popular thing and it is the, you know, the biggest thing in the world culturally in games, period. But... Um, at its core, it is a very solid shooter yeah. and a very fun like battle royale yeah, experience. Yeah, totally. Um, and I think that that it gets knocked a little bit for for being so popular, but like you can't hold that against no. something like it. Yep. Yeah, there, are you looking at emails over here? No, no. I was bringing up <laughs> the Matrix because you didn't include this in the uh, in the run oh, of show. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I yep. The Matrix. The, the movie? Matrix. I can see the Matrix. What what Matrix you're, specifically are you looking you're at? You're just yeah. zeros and ones. Uh, the Matrix cool. of the Super Mario characters. Oh yes, you're right. What? Which is well, this is our next story. Another another wonderful segue. Um, How much of a segue? He's actually leading you on. Yeah, I know. Well, I, it wouldn't have even happened if well, I hadn't busted him. On. I, I was just I'm say, texting my wife even about dinner. If I hadn't busted him being on his Can phone. Can we have sausages tonight? Uh, it looks like uh, one of uh, it was a Reddit user, correct? Yeah. A Reddit uh, user with a lot of time. Yeah, went through and systematically kind of it's redundant uh, categorized. <laughs> nice. Uh, 
all the Mario Party characters by which is the best Mario Party character to use in yep. Super Mario Party okay. by using the the uh, the math behind their dice rolls because yep. each character has unique dice to them. So we went through and did a bunch of math, and the winner is yeah. So the, I mean, this is good for people who are playing against their friends. The winners are. Uh, Bowser, Boo, and Wario. Mm -hmm. I've never played uh, as any of them. Me because yep. on average, they can get you further in the game. You'll be rolling higher dice uh, dice totals. But there's also greater risk with those characters because mm -hmm. they can lose coins. They have a couple of like minus coins on, on, their, on their dice. But on average... If the gods of luck uh, are looking your way, you'll be able to get uh, farther with these guys. That's so uh, Bowser, Boo, and Wario. Don't tell your friends. That brings ever. up a great. That brings up a great question. Uh, yeah. Who are the German gods of luck? The German <laughs> gods of luck are uh, Hofbräu, uh -huh. Akupshaw, uh -huh. Paulana. Okay. Any coach. Any coach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. These are all beer sounding names. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They are in fact all, they all are all beer. breweries. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you very much for that update. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. I'm yeah. sorry I didn't put the table in there. No, that's all right. Uh, show came in a little hot this week. I'm Everyone's going to pick those dudes now. And now, let's talk about the stuff that we're playing. All right. Uh, we talked about Mega Man 11 a couple of weeks ago, and I'm still playing that game uh, like it's going out of style. Why? Because it is so incredibly difficult. Yes. Um, and I kind of want to talk to you a little bit. So I've dropped it down from casual mode to super babby because I it's impossible to play. Like, yeah. not, not mechanically. I think it's very solid mechanically. It is just incredibly hard so it and sounds it, like it's pretty accurate to a Mega Man game that's what I was gonna yeah. say as a guy it hurts my ego as a guy that's played Mega Man's 1 through 10 multiple times to have to drop this level but I'm <laughs> also excited to get through it on the easiest difficulty mm -hmm. and then try it again on the next one and then try it again on the next one you know I, I, I do think that that there's something to be said about scaling difficulty yeah but uh, yeah I, I think it was bubble man stage where uh, bounce man, uh, bounce man, yeah. Where it was just like <laughs> everyone's complaining about. Yeah, that I was just I can't do this anymore. I'm just Dude, dying I, so I, much. I put a screen cap of that stage in the Nintendo voice chat Facebook group, and above it, I just wrote "f this stage." Yeah, <laughs> like that is the thing is Mega Man is like is a sort of tight, precise action platforming game, and then you get to bounce man stage, and it is just chaos and, and not and in and a did fun you get way. It through, did you get through it? Yeah, eventually yeah. I did the same thing Zach did. I dropped it down to ultra baby diaper mode or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a, can, I, can you actually do that on the fly? Like, yeah. Walk? Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. You know, you can just walk over to my desk and uh, borrow an amiibo. That's true. Yeah, I could yeah. do that too. What's, I mean, the, true. what's the power? Uh, all sorts of stuff like health back. And, oh, yeah, yeah, it'll give and you uh, uh, energy yeah. tanks. It'll give you extra it, lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's a total. It's a total modern cheat. And I, I know the commenters are already roasting us because that, that's what happens. Like, it's, I, I, it's like here's the thing. <laughs> I love Mega Man. I don't think this is a great game. So while you're mad at me for the other thing, let's keep going. <laughs> uh, this this is a no. I think this is like a like just perfectly mediocre Mega Man game. I, I, I think wow. that the. So, Despite the fact that it is so frustratingly difficult in parts, mm -hmm. I really love it. And I don't know if it's just sh like blind brand allegiance or what, but I, I, I just love Mega Man and I so love that it's a Mega I do Man too. game I just, that's like updated. I, for I own both of the collections on Switch and, and like, you know, like half of the Mega Man knockoff games that have come to Switch. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I went back and played 9 and 10 after this and I was like, okay, no, these are way better games. Like they just have they have better levels, they are tighter, they just like they have better art direction. Like I I love the old pixel art. I think this game is like it's halfway there with the cell sh cell shaded stuff and then like it kind of loses the plot with a lot of the backgrounds look sort of like iPhone games. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't think it's that great. Okay. What I just the, don't, what, yeah, I don't like the double gear system. No, what are the what are the knockoff games like Beta oh, Man, uh, like, uh, Man, Mighty like, Number no. Nine? Yeah, oh, I see Nine those. Or Gunvolt. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Gunvolt. Yeah, I mean Gunvolt. Right. Right. There's also Twenty XX, which is effectively yep. a roguelike Mega Man game that you should play. It's better than this one. Wow. Yeah, Twenty XX is yeah Twenty XX is really great. But also, if you out there haven't tried uh, any of the Gunvolt games, like yep. give those a shot because that was sort of doing next generation Mega Man before Mega Man Eleven mm. was even a. a yeah, you know, sparkle in whoever's eye. Mighty but. Gunvolt Burst is the one that's Weird like. To say. No, that's good. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, it is the sort of sp spin off of Mighty Number no. Nine, but it's like the good one. Yeah. So yeah. between yeah. you kind of being down on you still loving it, where it's a seven game, yeah. 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 Right. yeah I, Perfect. I, I, I like. I think Sam's review was spot on. Yep. Uh, I just. I, I think it was high, man. 
Yeah. Go to you, you think, yeah, Sam must have been high if you got that movie. <laughs> Craig, have you had an opportunity to play Mega Man 11? I haven't. I've only been yeah. reading you got one in again. his gripes yeah. mm-hmm. and everyone else's gripes. Uh, right. And I've never really been into the Mega Man series, honestly. Um, well, let me tell you, this one will not sway you. <laughs> I, just, I, I played them. I played through a bunch of them, but they never really kind of sat mm. well with me uh, mm. in, the ba- in the past. So I just think it's like it's... It's not retro enough, and it's not new enough. Like it's is sort it is stuck in this weird world between the past and, and the future. Like it is not trying anything enough. It's not revolutionizing the franchise, and it's not. It doesn't feel classic enough to me. It's just mm-hmm. kind of stuck there. Yeah, we talked a little bit, little bit about that on the Mega Man episode about how it it, it does some I'll things take a new. Listen. And it, yeah, well, you're there. It does some things new, and <laughs> it does, but it doesn't do enough new. Yeah. Um, you're playing what is this Zarvot? Is that how I, you say? I it? hope that's how it's pronounced. Uh, what does that Power mean? Ranger. Zarvot? Yeah. Yeah. Zarvat is a really cool game I didn't know anything about. Oh. I tweeted out my fi- my list of 15 favorite games this year, and a couple of people were like, yeah, but what about Zarvat? I'm like, what are you <laughs> talking about? So I did some research, and I, du- I reached out to the PR people working on the game, and I'm like, what is this game, Zarvat? And they sent me a code for it, uh, and Tom Marks is playing it right now, too. He was like really like you know high on it. I don't know if we can make that reference on the show anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, I... I, this game is uh, it feels like something from like the N64 or GameCube era. It's super weird. It is a top-down cube-based exploration shooter game that it looks like you're controlling a GameCube. If yeah, you're watching you're, the, you're yeah. controlling a tiny GameCube that talks and shoots. Okay. Uh, but he also has an apartment and he has friends. And so there's a there's a story. This actually, it looks my, like my kind of game. Yeah, so I, I, cool. Craig, I think you would love this game. This feels like totally something from like the weird. Like it feels like something Cubivore. Like Cubivore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. But uh, it's it's got a lot of like sort of like great almost twin stick shooter aesthetic uh, to it and I like too. that tilt shift focus thing yeah that's going on um and so like you'll be walking around the overworld and like waves of enemies will show up and you'll have to kill them all and then move on to the next thing and your friend's like we really got to get our friend a banana for their birthday and you're like okay let's go find one of them <laughs> like it's super weird it's really hard to explain but please keep an eye on this game it's called zarvat or Zarvo. I don't know if the T is, is, is silent. It is or not. also a rare glimpse into Brian's brain. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. That's yep. exactly how it operates. That's how the thoughts get around. Yeah. It um, looks cool, man. I'd mm-hmm. like to to uh, make a motion that uh, you know we have a rule on the show that if if we mention uh, Dark Souls, you got to take a shot. Right. But I, I think that we should also put into effect if anyone mentions Tom Marks, you have to take a shot. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. New Tom NBC Marks rule. Too. Well, we just come up on this show several times. We can't stack all these rules, though. That's no, gonna that get very dangerous. No, that just makes watching more fun. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, blacked out by minute seven. <laughs> Pear, did you add Art of Balance on this? No, list? that's a Brian joined. I did, but you, you played Art of Balance. I did play that. Oh, I played yeah. that Craig, you probably oh, you played, yeah. played Art. Well, I played it on 3DS, and I played it on the on Wii. Wii U, right? Yeah, also came the Wii U. Yeah, Wii, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good game. I mean, I haven't played the version that they're talking about here, which is on Switch, right? Yeah, yeah. So this was made by, is it Shinnin? Shinnin, yeah. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, they're really cool. They're guys, right? Yeah, they're very technical. Better at tech than they are at gameplay, but this game is pretty cool. Yeah, so they've made a bunch of really awesome shmups, and they're sort of there at the launch of Nintendo consoles and handhelds a lot to sort of be like this is how like the graphics that this 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 thing can perform. Uh they quietly sort of tweeted out a surprise the other day and they're like guess what we have a new game coming and everyone got really excited and it was uh Art, Art of Balance, mm-hmm. which is not like the most exciting game in the world, but I, I played a bunch of this game on Switch after you know skipping it on Wii U and playing it on Wii, uh, and it's really fun. It's a balance-based sort of physics game. You can play multiplayer, uh, and it's pretty chill. Like you have these like weird Zen rock formations that you stack up mm-hmm. uh, and try to uh, effectively do objectives and reach parameters, and then they come tumbling down, and then you sort of give it a nudge to try again and uh, arrange them in different patterns and stuff yeah, like there's, that. There's a million of these games on iPhone. And, yeah, and I, yeah, but but, uh, but I think this is one of the better ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, I really like this it's, game. It's well put together, and it, it really used the the Wii uh, the Wii remote very very well when it first came out. Yeah. Right, and then it also demonstrates that this uh, your little Joy-Con With can actually no do sensor pretty bar. well. Honestly, yeah. like that, that's the one thing I've wondered if they're going to do that a lot more. Like I think the first game that did that was World of Goo. Yeah, they used the, yeah. the, with the Switch controller. Not the not that great though the controls in that one. Really, mm-hmm. but yeah, I thought they did a really really yeah. good job on it. And I, I feel like it's a little floaty, but the world ends with yeah. you just did it too. And yeah. then Okami yeah. does it, and they're, they're basically mm-hmm. figuring out that you yeah. can do the, the as accurate as a, as a Wii remote without the sensor bar. Yeah. You can also, you can play the whole game with a Pro Controller and in touchscreen mode on handheld. Nice. So, yeah, it's cool. Check it it's out. It's all about stacking things. Yeah. yeah. Not unlike uh, Tricky Towers that we talked about Tricky last Towers week. we talked about last week. Still a um, great puzzle game you should definitely get. 
Perry, you put uh, Save Me Mr. Taco. I, I didn't put that on there. Um, we, we just got the codes for it. Were you able to boot it up yet? Or yeah, I, yet? Played, I played like the first 20 okay, minutes. Okay, yeah, I just saw the, the, the beginning of it as well. Yep. Um, the, I think we showed a trailer of that game before. It's uh -huh. basically this homage to classic games. And like, what caught my eye with this, this comes from Nicholas, um, what caught my eye with this game is that they actually have Game Boy graphics, which yeah. you see so rarely in kind of like this world of usually like 8-bit or 16-bit lookalikes. And then uh, Mr. Tak Taco is Japanese for octopus, octopus by the way, right. so it's not actually a taco. Um, <laughs> so it, it's like right. this this very cool retro platformer star starring this ridiculous octopus. Yeah, the hook for this thing is that he shoots ink, which hardens enemies that he can then jump on. And yep. then you use that to reach certain environments. It's got like a very Kirby style doors that yep. let you in and out of levels. Um, yeah, like you you mentioned it, like uh, everyone makes retro platforming games now, but this one completely nails like the old pixel art. Craig, it's, this is something you would have yeah. reviewed oh, back yeah. on the Game Boy. Oh yeah, they're really sticking to the the, the restrictions mm -hmm. of the, G G the Game Boy. Yeah, yeah, the original Game Boy. Yeah, my, my my first Nintendo system was uh, the original Game Boy, so uh, seeing this in action really kind of struck my heartstrings because it, it looks so pixel perfect, right? An original Game Boy. Yeah, game. it's it's weird. I like that's I, I I love that whole era. I love that aesthetic. It's like it's it's hard to understate like how cool that was back mm -hmm. then to sort of be like, oh, I have Mario and Zelda in my in my in my right. pocket on yeah. on the bus, like. It was really awesome. So I, I respect anybody that like sort of completely nails that art style. And yeah. it's also it's it. also interesting to like work within those limitations in yeah. 2018. It, yeah. So, it, yeah, it is. But I'm I'm at this point where you know whenever I see a new game coming out, I'm like, oh, another 8-bit game. Oh, another 16-bit yeah. game. Right? Like we we're making the joke like a a 16-bit Metroidvania on Switch. Yeah. You know, I mean, here's our top 100 of those games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I and and I felt like this because of the Game Boy style and, and some of the the levels was felt felt fresh. I'm I'm looking forward to indie devs, um, not just doing 8-bit and retro style games, but well, actually coming up with scene. some. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. Come up with yeah, yeah. We'll have like jittery polygons yeah. and, and like, early 3D a, games. A game showed up, and I think it's on Switch, but I played it on the iPhone. It's called Never Stop Sneaking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right, right, right. It's Metal yeah. Gear Solid. It, it's very, you know, yeah. Metal Gear Solid, but it uses the PlayStation, the original PlayStation, the blurry texture. Uh -huh. that yes, stuff, so, that yeah. is on Switch. I almost yeah. bought it the other day because it looks super interesting. Uh, it's the, really, yeah. it's really weird. Yeah, I think it's from the developer of Dust Elysian Tales. Yeah, yeah. So it has a it has a character named like. President Helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. It, 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 it really is. is a, it yeah. is hard on its sleeve. Yeah. Very, very heavily inspired. Not mechanically, not like gameplay wise. Right. To, to a certain extent. It's very by dope. Metal Gear Solid, like yep. tone, plot, like very informed by the original MGS. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that art style. It would be really cool to see like low res polys come back. Yeah. I would it's really gonna happen. That. And then you're gonna have to get the the really gray, blurry the textures of the N64 look. I'm yeah. sure. That's or that 360 coming. era where everything was beige and like yeah. wet and gray. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Yep. Well, speaking of uh, speaking of low polys, I want to uh -oh. talk about. The best GBA games. Oh man! Oh yeah! No, no, polygons. no polygons on that. Yeah, there's a couple. Actually. Yeah, there, there are a few. Check now, out IGN's top ten polys. Look, look, look we, background, right? So, so Craig, Craig I was launched say IGN all that. Pocket. Yes. You know this? Yeah. Okay, you know this. Yeah. Good. Well, do does do they? Because like, I know true. the audience has changed. Over well, Zach was not born yet, but <laughs> back back then, I I yeah. guarantee you that yeah. I was. But no, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about. I was going to use this as a, as a way to a jumping off point sure. because this is your list from yes. 2007. Yeah, um, it was clickbait, <laughs> but it was my list. That's true. I mean, honestly. Yeah, and a funny story. Uh, I became familiar with your work through this particular list. Nice. What? Because one of the first video features that I worked on at IGN, they were like, "Hey, um, somebody like out there." Is just looking at this GBA list. Like it was one of our highest traffic pages, but we had no video for it. Yeah. So it was like, make a video for this. Sure. When and so when did you start IGN Pocket? I think that was ninety nine. Yeah. So oh yeah, it was it was I was on the PlayStation team, but we saw that there was still Game Boy games coming out, and actually, they, I think the Ninja, Neo Geo Pocket was coming. Was right. Pokemon out. was the Pokemon big. was huge, yeah. and handheld like, gaming was gigantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but no one was covering it. Right, and so like me and Pear, pretty much like on a part time, were reviewing all the games that were coming in, and then Pear's like, "Hey, you know, why don't you do it full time?" And did so you did you review Link's Awakening for IGN? That one I didn't. I did not do Link's Awakening. I did not do any of the Legend of Zelda games. I think Chris Carl. He's did mad the, that it didn't get a ten. Just <laughs> <so you know. laughs> I can go in and so, change the score oh yeah. now. I have Minish those powers. Cap, I, I mean, it's on the list, right? Right, yeah. right, right. But uh, Minish Cap. I, Spoilers. I like that's in there. Actually, I don't think it's on. It's the not top on the. 10, so, right? yeah. so I've 
boiled it down to the top <coughs> 10 here Yeah. because um, I figured we want to talk about each of these games and kind of decide whether they were too high or too low or right in the right yeah. spot. Yeah, but there were a it. few that I wanted to, uh, to, to point out here before, okay. we get, before we get too deep into it. So Golden Sun at number 24. Yes. Accurate. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, accurate. I think, I think it was a, a good visually RPG. That's awesome a really good game. game yeah. But it just was super repetitive. I mean, yeah. Like, and, I love gold. And plus, and plus, for me, I'm not never into, and, and it's been a while since I played this, so maybe I'm incorrect, but I'm not into the random battles mm -hmm. of like RPGs when you're wandering around, there's nothing to see, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. oh, you're in a battle. Yeah. I think that game did it, and that's yeah. probably what hurt it. Um, I just don't like that mechanic. It was like a, it's a relic of when you couldn't display so many sprites and you wanted to kind of like surprise people. Mm -hmm. um, That's Pokemon, a, Pokemon did a good job of it because yeah. you're wandering around in grass. grass but it's like, but when sense. you're just wandering around an area and all of a sudden, oh, you're in a battle, it's like, it's really frustrating. Golden Sun was like a really gorgeous RPG yeah. for the time. It hasn't aged well because um, it's it's got sort of that weird like... Uh, 16 bit pre rendered Rendering, look to yeah. it, or everything's kind of fuzzy when it turns around. Oh. Um, but I remember really enjoying it at the time, although I haven't, I haven't finished it again. It's one of those games that where, where I felt like it didn't learn enough from the 16 bit era. If you go back and you play like Breath of Fire or any of these games, you know, from the, those ages, like Final Fantasy games, like six, four, five, six are still fantastic to this date. But there are a lot of the lesser known ones that have the same faults that Golden Golden Sun has, right? You know, right, right. namely the kind of like the trite, like you're about to lose leave your house and yeah. it's like one yeah. more thing yeah. right like all those tropes are still in this game yeah, yeah. i still enjoyed it like yeah, it looked Camelot's really great. pretty at the time when mm -hmm. we first mm -hmm. played it yeah. so i don't want to spend too much time on these that are outside oh, of the top 10 I list talk forever uh, <laughs> oh i know trust yeah. me uh <laughs> but I, I did want to just point out also ninja 50 at 23 which i'm in I, full support of so i pre i looked at the, the list pair gave me kind of a heads up that we were going to talk about this and i think i maybe underscored that game mm. ninja no, 50 yeah. is bad I've never played ass. that game it's, it's amazing so it's probably like one of the most slept on yeah. secret hidden gems really? on I, GBA. I, I have a cart that yeah, I will right. loan you if you right. want to play. Is it it's my really cool. cart that you probably dug up in the basket that's over there? I don't Does think it have so. Craig scratched <laughs> in it. No, that's that's <laughs> actually one of the that's one of the more rare and more yes. expensive GBA games. Although yeah. buying the GBA cart games alone is like hundreds. Is it? Of yeah. yeah, buying GBA games in the aftermarket is a nightmare on eBay because I'll of the bootlegs. On my GB Micro, yeah. yeah. Ninja, Ninja Five O is. Amazing. I got one of those, too. and I think that if anything, I was going to change anything. That one should be higher. Uh, mm. Minish Cap at number twenty. Yeah, which I feel like it's. It's too low for yeah, me. Well, it's one of the few Zelda games I finished to completion uh -huh. uh, at the time. Uh -huh. um, and I thought it was good, but it was just really easy. Yeah, um, it was. Yeah. It is very easy. Yeah. But I, I, I love like I loved one all of the lesser ones. I loved all the stuff of like shrinking down. Yeah, yeah. Great. Puzzles, it plays with like, scale really well. That. Like the scale stuff is really cool. I, and I, I really love the, the thing that, that I kind of wish... It's a little too simple to be implemented in any of the larger Zelda games, yep. but the the collection games where you would find puzzle pieces essentially, and then you'd have to find the other person in that world that had I forget what they're called, but like interlocking puzzle pieces yep. that would like oh, open yeah, yeah, a yeah. door or yep, like yep. reveal a chest yep. or yep. like so cool. I love that. Yeah, but I mean, we should say that this, this list also had re-releases on it. So, Link True. to the Past, which is you can't a vastly <laughs> superior game nope. to Minish Cast. You can't uh, you can't uh, talk Minish about. I, I don't Zone. feel like you can talk about the best GBA games without talking about Nintendo's run yeah. Yeah. releases. Yep. So, I do um, I do want to say real quick that it was really awesome that from Oracle of Ages to Oracle of Seasons to Minish Cap, Capcom. Completely knocked out of the park oh, three yeah. times in a yeah. row with handhelds all the games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then they were never given the license again. I don't know what happened there. Give it, give, <laughs> yep. give it back uh, to them. We got Metroid Fusion at number eighteen. Yep. Uh, I think that's pr probably right on the money. Yeah, yeah I that love, good. I like Metroid Fusion quite a bit. Yeah. Um, as long as Zero Zero Mission is ahead of it. Oh, we're gonna oh, we're gonna be talking about Zero <laughs> Mission. Um, and then Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga at twelve, which I would have liked to see in the top ten. I would put it in the top ten now mm. because I think it's but then probably the best Mario and Luigi game, and it's so funny. But when you actually see the games that I have in the top ten, what would you bump? And the oh, ones that I'm missing. There's a couple. Oh, okay. Yeah, all, all right. Let's, all right. Let's, 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 so I, I would like to say though, not a single Fire Emblem game in the ten. Yeah. So. Yeah, Greg, no. Fire Emblem. The, uh, right. Fire Emblem. I, I, I want to say Wars. I prefer more than. Yeah, the Fire I agree. Good Same. call. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good call. Yeah, okay. It's a good call. So here we go. <laughs> a little wrong. <laughs> number, number ten, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Right. Which. Yeah. yeah. I think that was uh, was that the first one that had the the dongle that you plugged into the the system to transfer your I don't, Pokemon. I don't remember. Wireless that was the first one. He wasn't born. Remember? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think. I'm 33 years old. Again. Yes, I was so, born. Plus, it's, there's been so many Pokemon games, and it's like I actually retired from Pokemon because I just got. Like, I mean, oh, they'll get you back. Uh, it they'll will get you back on the. Well, I've got the Let's Go uh, in pre-order, so nice. I'm gonna be playing yep. that. So uh, you're gonna go with uh, Pikachu or Eevee? 
uh, I haven't decided yet because I'm going to go digitally. I already mm. bought the Pokeball. Yeah. But I'm going to get the digital version. I just I don't know. I haven't mm. figured it out yet. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay, here we go. This is this is the one that hurts for me. Okay. Number nine, Metroid Zero Mission. Now, why does that hurt? Because because it is to me probably this would number be one. Number for one. Zach, yeah, this yeah. would okay. be number one for me. I, I think it is the best Metroid game. I, I think, agree. Yeah, Brian, I agree. And I agree on this. We okay. we uh, we. We anger some people with that because obviously Super Metroid is the Metroid you know. Prime is a very, the first Metroid Prime is a very close second for me, but yeah. Metroid Zero Mission is it is to me what Metroid should be, yes. and it is this is some of the most beautiful to date some of the most beautiful pixel art. I mean, probably this side of Super feel Metroid, like, yeah. But I feel yeah. like over Super Metroid, this is the one to reboot with the Switch with new art, like yeah, upgraded art. This is also one of the best remakes Nintendo's ever made. This yeah. is a remake of the original NES yep. version, and it fixes everything yeah. in that game. Um, I will argue that, yeah, it does have better pixel art than Super Metroid. Now, come on. Number nine isn't bad. I mean, it, it, it's... <laughs> out of, like, the 9,000 games. Out of 1,000 games, games number true. nine? That's come true. on. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I just... I you put it higher, yeah. I would have put it at the top my list. Um, it's been a while since you've been nitpicked to death by commenters, and that's what we're doing. It's, am- today, it's amazing. I, I love didn't hearing Parrot, <laughs> Parrot didn't invite you on for the Craig Harris roast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number eight, Final Fantasy VI Advance, which Final Fantasy VI, we've done a retrospective episode on this yeah. show. Uh, if you haven't uh, checked that out, go, go watch game. that episode. Yeah. But amazing. Incredible. One yeah. of the greatest games of all time. Probably my, my favorite RPG of all time. Yeah. I think you're right on the yep. money here. Um, okay, seven, Super Mario Advance 3 Yoshi's Island. Okay. I would have dropped this much lower. Like, I do think it deserves a spot on the top 25, but I think this is arguably the worst way to play Yoshi's Island. Well, I understand, yeah. and I, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, in my defense... It just does t- two full middle yeah. fingers. In right my now. defense, I f- at the time, and I still think it's strong, but I think that Yoshi's Island is one of the best 2D platforming games ever. Ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the only thing that was wrong with, uh, with the game on GBA was the touch... Fuzzy, get dizzy level mm-hmm. was the mode seven completely stuff. broken on yeah. on a GBA, yeah. um, but everything else was great. The ratio also felt a little bit weird. I feel like on GBA, you mean the screen mm-hmm. size? I mean, they they kept the 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 pixel size exactly the same, so there yeah. was going to be some cutting yeah. of, mm-hmm. of the. This this is unpopular, but as a huge fan of all the two D Mario games leading up to Super Mario World, one of the best video games ever made. Uh, I never thought Yoshi's Island was a great director. <sighs> of the franchise. God, I, I love Yoshi's Island. It's so got much. a lot I of great stuff going for. It, but I I think it's like no come it's not <laughs> pair come back you have to work with me that's yeah. how it works yeah. uh it's yeah I'm not nearly in love with this game as other Nintendo fans are and I've never admitted that on the show before and it feels good to I get love it that out. game I think yeah. it's so cool I, I can see how the the art style doesn't pop as much as a I Super like Mario the art game. okay well yeah. then you're weird I think <laughs> <laughs> I think I think like the screaming baby and shooting eggs is like oh. not what I'm looking for in a but Mario that's game now that your father don't you appreciate <laughs> the flights you're I get enough you're basically that Yoshi the screaming the screaming baby it, it is aged very poorly because I feel like yeah the older yeah. that I get the less and less I want to hear that awful yep. noise. But um, try hearing I it at 4 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> I don't necessarily. <laughs> excuse me, I don't necessarily think that the, sh- the egg shooting stuff is bad. I really love Yoshi's Island. No, it's fine. It's just not what I want when I sit down to play a Super Mario platform. Okay. But um, you are I'll, correct. Yeah, play it on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and I think the interesting thing here is that um, at this time, this was probably the only way to play it because. Unless you own the Super Nintendo mm-hmm. cart, yes. right? Because like it wasn't anywhere else. Right. Um, the Super Nintendo uh, version of Yoshi's Island was sort of notoriously hard to come by, mm-hmm. and we were years away from uh, the uh, emulation SNES of the, classic. Yeah. 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 Also, the fact that it's got an SFX chip in it, so like, yeah. that's why that's why the game actually was one of the best platformers of the time because yeah. we're doing things that the tech allowed it to do. Yeah. yeah. And the SNES classic actually completely nailed the emulation. Yeah. I would I would love to do stuff. give the uh, this game Yoshi's Island the same uh Final Fantasy 6 treatment and kind of do like a back end of an episode on it because it's yeah. it's yeah. Re- the, the the production and the development of that game is really interesting. We'll make Brian play it. Yeah. The absolutely. Entire I've game. played um, it. I've beaten it. It's just it's <laughs> not Super Mario World right. 2. Yeah. Number 6, Mario Golf. Yes. Yeah. Great. This yes. is a great version of yes. Mario Golf. Yes. I really love this. Uh, this is a great addition to this list. It I continued to no continue the. With this I mean, the Game Boy Color version was already amazing, right? Yeah. And they continued mm-hmm. that game on the Game mm-hmm. Boy Advance. Um, I can't remember if there was any sort of connection to the GameCube version. I can't remember. I feel mm-hmm. like there probably in this era there yeah. probably was. Yeah. But did you play any Mario Golf games after that? Oh, they 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 haven't been as good. Honestly, it's like I think the RPG elements made the game awesome and they kind of went away from that. Play Golf Story? 
Golf yeah, story, yeah, yeah, I yeah. like that game. Yeah. I kind of fell off of it, but it yeah. was good. Everybody yeah. falls off. <laughs> That's the problem with that game. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, okay number five. Okay, number I, five. I want to hear your perspective on this one. I, I have no perspective because I never played. Oh, this game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two on right. GBA. Oh, uh, and I never actually played it. I I played a. a an obscene amount of uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 right. on PlayStation, mm -hmm. but not on my GB. I have played this. I bought this game. Okay. This, this was a... like at, at what time did you buy it? What, what, when it first came out. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, this was a... Yeah, 4.30. <laughs> this, was a like, this was a technical marvel oh. on GBA. Like, the fact that this was even feasible, that it, they distilled this gigantic, like, open-world-ish uh, skateboarding game. It looks like the 3D version, it's but it's not crazy. 3D. Yeah. It's one of the most amazing... Like, experiences when you when you see a game for the first time this is one of the most amazing experiences yeah i've ever experienced like it was the, knowing what the the gba was going to be was it just going to be a super nintendo right mm -hmm. I mean, it's super nintendo portable that's what the idea then they come out and it's like here's tony hawk and yes it's top down um and it's kind of you know it's scrolling around but the yeah. character is a actual 3d model that's been mm -hmm. you know that has all the tricks from the console version yep. and you have to kind of trick you know trick your brain into knowing this is a three quarter view, but the gameplay is incredible. I mean, yeah. you're like, oh my god, this is running on a handheld. Now at the mm -hmm. time, I mean, the handhelds were like I said, it was like this two D. That's all it would. It, 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 it had like like great digitized music. It was also like I mean, when we play By Shin Yen, we just yeah, talked about them. Like, yeah. When we play modern ports of games on Switch, which is you know Nintendo's newest handheld, it's a you're basically playing like a blurrier version of Doom or something like that. With Tony Hawk, they built a brand new game from yeah. the ground up for this for the GBA, playing to all its strengths. It only used four buttons because that's mm -hmm. what yeah. the system had. Well, yeah, two, yeah, two, two and two shoulders. Buttons, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I don't, it's very very cool game. I don't know if it's like top five. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I will I will fight to the nail <laughs> to keep it at five. Number four, uh, big two big thumbs up for me. This is Advance Wars. Yes. Yep. Ah. This is one of my favorite yep. games of all time. Period. And it has single yeah. cart multiplayer. Did you oh put god, two? That was so yeah. cool. Did you put two uh, lower on the list or not in the twenty five at all? I didn't like two as much oh, as because one. it was too dark. Yeah, or, right. You didn't. They like really the changed the, the style and everything. It was weird. Yeah. Craig, I, mean, I want to say nowhere near the top ten is Mario Kart, and I think you made a good call with that because I don't think Mario Kart Super Circuit is that great. It's mm -hmm. in the tw top it twenty-five. Is, it is in the top twenty-five. Yeah, yes. not in yeah, the top ten. And it's great, ten. and mm -hmm. it had single cart multiplayer. It did. Everyone but you had to play Yoshi. Shy Guys. Oh, was it Yoshi? Yoshi, I think. Shy Guy. What, was it really? Yeah. Oh, so. I may uh, be wrong. We'll figure it out. Number three. <laughs> uh, a game that we all know and yep. love, and we've talked about it a little bit earlier, and that's uh, Legend of Zelda: a Link to the Past yep. with, with four, four swords, swords, and that's which is kind super of what, important. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. the if if it wasn't a re-release, that would be my number one on the GBA. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's just it's such a perfect game, and then adding four swords to that whole thing, and like this was the time where you know we're getting together and playing uh, linked up games. Yeah, uh, this, this was just perfect. The uh, so good. Uh, outside of Minish Cap, you know, th there wasn't really an original Zelda on GBA, but there definitely wasn't an original Mario game. It got yeah. ports of what Years, was it? Right, it one, two, three, three four, and, and Yoshi's World. Yeah, and Yoshi's all, Island, all yeah. of those games got ported. Um, but the hook there was that they were portable for the first time ever, yeah. and they were really, really special. It was Isn't really it funny, cool to play. Super Mario Isn't that funny how er, cyclical everything is. I know. We're so excited to play things portably. And the one thing I thought was pretty cool is Super Mario Three had the the e reader attachment where you could actually scan the scan right. cards. Yeah, like that. That Nintendo's was first rad. dabbling in DLC, basically. Yeah, it <laughs> microtransactions. Yeah. Uh, number two, and I just want to shake your hand for putting this on the list yeah. so high. Uh, this is Castlevania: Aria of Sorrow. Yeah. I, I will say. Personally, I think I like Dawn of Sorrow better. Okay. Um, but so the of the Moon. that's the DS version. GBA, right? That's so the, Circle of the Moon. No, Circle of the Moon was the first one, and it's impossible to play on the non-lit GBA. Yes, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so the way it goes is Circle of the Moon was too dark. Mm -hmm. Harmony of Dissonance was too light. Too light. <laughs> Aria of Sorrow was just right. It was yeah. like the Goldilocks rule. You're right. Dawn of Sorrow was... You're right. Dawn, Dawn of Sorrow was the, th the DS, DS one. Version. So the, and Aria of Sorrow is the one that should be in this position. So these those four... Uh, Castlevania games that run are maybe my favorite Metroidvania mm -hmm. games ever. It's yep. weird I mean, that they're, stopped. That's they're like one incredible. of those weird mysteries. That we had a yeah. new game, a new 2D Castlevania game every two years, and then it just stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Konami, if you're listening, take the three GBA Castlevania games, put them on Switch. Yep. Just drag well, them and drop them well, over. A lot of <laughs> play your Castlevania <laughs> pachinko machines if you do it. I'll do I, it. I can't believe that Rondo and Symphony of the Night are not coming to Switch. It mm -hmm. really bums me out. Give it time. Um, yeah. But, I mean, what if they package... I think you said this last week. What if yep. they put all these ones together in a package and drop them Ooh. on Switch? I'll say this every week until they do it. Yeah. They will. Also, so Resident um, 4. I know you don't make <laughs> that, but... Put okay, that and then... Number one here, Craig Harris. Yes. Yes. WarioWare Twist. Yes. 
Yeah. Where, where, the, the best game on the GBA. Absolutely. Have you, have, can you experience that game anywhere else? Can you and the and it, it basically it was the tech that did it, you know, mm -hmm. the, the 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 rotation, right. and the, uh -huh. the tactile, feedback, and they, that was the basis. It was for built the into the cartridge, Wii remote. Right? Yeah, I mean, that, it had that, this big sort of clunky yeah. block yeah. at the yeah. end yep. of it. Yeah, but it was, I mean, like they incorporated so many games and mini games yeah. and toys and mm -hmm. all these things. Like it's just an incredible experience. Yeah, it I, is really good. I don't know if it's the number one game on the system. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I actually don't know if it's my favorite WarioWare game on GBA. I love the original WarioWare micro games with. The dollar really? sign. You like, oh man. Um, I have a funny story about Warrior where uh, Twisted, though. I bought the Game Boy Player, right. which plugged into the bottom oh. of your GameCube. <laughs> And I, I this is going. and I played this game no. with the Game Boy Player on the GameCube, and my I also had one of those like uh, portable <laughs> yeah. TV screens that yeah. you can. Did you ever see those? Yes, yes. It was a screen. the toilet seat. So yeah. yeah, so basically you had to rotate this giant GameCube, which had a spinning <laughs> disc inside it to <laughs> to boot up the Game Boy Player. Oh, uh, that doesn't that, once very it boots very it up, very, you, you very don't have to worry about that skipping because yeah. he just yeah. boots it up once. But, but similarly, Boktai on the yeah. GBA. Yeah. So that didn't yeah. make my list. I mean, it's a cool game. That to review that was such a pain in the butt. So oh, like yeah. basically, what I did on the first game, I actually took the Game Boy Player, right, um, and put, took put the Game Boy or the the GameCube out the window <laughs> onto the roof of my apartment. Amazing. So that so that I can actually play the game. Yeah. It's like you know, because Kojima yeah. worked on that game. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, the weird thing about Wario or Twisted is we all take this for granted now. Every single device we has has accelerometers and rumble and all that kind of stuff. iPhone games were like all these tilt to control. Yeah. Um, Wario or Twisted is effectively the first game to really do that. Yeah. Right? It had it had a what, well, like it, a it had the cheese grater in it. Yeah. yeah. So, so you could, and then you can yeah. feel the vibration and all that stuff. It Come felt on. like the a telephone. Grater. You can rotate the telephone. And you hear I'm, I'm going to be honest. I feel like I feel like maybe you've convinced me that yeah. this yeah. is the number one it, choice. It yeah. it might not feel the same way. It's not as special anymore if you yeah. play it today. And, and it's from, the same with Tony Hawk. And right? from what I understand, uh, the game if you, you it's really tough to play now because a lot of the chips in the the twisted like kind of gotten like the moisture is actually kind of set them off, and so you can't actually play it anymore. Oh, that's it yeah. on rice. Yeah. yeah. Keep it in a box. Of rice. So if you have a working Mario Twisted, consider yourself lucky. Yeah. yeah. Well, Go ch Craig, rate that cheese. A very good list for one of the greatest systems of all time. And I'm it's never to. going to change. Is that correct? <laughs> That's well, true. I'm going to add Fire Emblem, both <laughs> of them, into the list. There is a video tied to it, so probably not. All right. Um, one more real quick thing. In the cement. people clicking on this list the most right now in 2018 are pirates. Yes. That's <laughs> and that's they're going to be true. very upset when they download Warrior or I Twisted would love and realize they can't shake oh, their yeah. laptop. Yeah, I would love to know what the click through is on this article. It's so. really high. It was, it, was, one of it, was, most it was for a long time yeah. one of our top rated articles. That's amazing. Yeah, yep. Probably year people year. looking for guidance on what yeah. ROMs mm -hmm. is. People looking for yeah. ROMs. Yeah. Now, yeah. Craig, I know you've been away from NVC for a while. Very, very But uh, we like to play a little game at the end of the show yeah. every week, a game that we call The Question Block. It's not a game. It's not a game. Mm. Um, okay, our first question comes from Carl DeNovio on Facebook. He says, hey, what's the deal with Kamek? Is he like... Bowser's mom. <laughs> good question. That's a really good question. I never. I thought Kamek was a dude too. Is that I a lady? A witch, it's wizard. A, I thought it was a thing. witcher. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Geralt. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he likes making Bowser big. So true. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think he's like. I think he's like Bowser Stephen Miller. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. Where he just does ne like weird nefarious things and like he just comes in and leaves and you're like, what did he yeah. do? I feel like he's like the skull to Bowser's bulk where he's just like, ah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. All right. um, okay. Andrew Knowles asks, can you guys talk about the future of the Donkey Kong franchise? No, we can't. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, what's up, with, what's up with Donkey Kong? Like, uh, you know, we, we know that Retro has obviously done a ton of work for Donkey Kong. Um, so are we talking about Donkey Kong Country or just regular Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong in general? Donkey Kong in general. Mario versus Donkey Kong? Are we talking about any of those? I mean, I want to, I'll say what I want. I want to, we just want to know what that big chimp's up to. Yeah. I want a reboot yeah. of Donkey Kong 94. Which is the best Donkey Kong? Oh yeah, ever. that'd be great. I, well, that's what Mario versus Donkey Kong is. Yeah, yeah, but they, they lost the plot with that. Yeah. Like, it became about like breaking into factories and saving like micro toys from disappearing, and yeah. then it wasn't even about Mario or Donkey Kong anymore after a while. Um, but yeah, that's see, what I, I, want. I I always wanted a Donkey Kong construction kit where you build like incredibly tall levels with the physics and the controls of a Donkey Kong game. But then Mario Maker happened. Yeah, right. like Donkey Kong Maker would be really limited by comparison. You know right. what was cool? Uh, the mini game in Nintendo Land uh, mm. that motion controlled Donkey oh, Kong. Oh yeah. yeah, that was cool. That was yeah, like really that was an neat. interesting take. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know where this franchise goes. I, it just so it feels like they should do like a Mario Odyssey for Donkey Kong, right? Like get back, yeah. like do Donkey Kong sixty four, but do it right. Not 
I don't know if Barrett's in there, but he's not, not broken. Yeah. Uh, not 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 boring. <laughs> somewhere out there. Millions of bananas. Somewhere out oh, there, man, though, Barrett is cheering. Huh? So. That was a collect. Too many yeah. bananas. Oh. But like, yes. but look at Odyssey and how good that is. They could do this for the Donkey Kong franchise. Yeah. And it could be really cool. Like there yeah. could be some serious like swinging mechanics and stuff, a la uh, Spider Man. If you guys, <laughs> if you, if at E three we find out Retro is working on another Donkey Kong side scrolling platformer, what will what will your re- reactions be? Oh, a resounding meh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know. We'll Josh see. Head asks, uh, different sort of question. Being in games journalism, do you ever get exhausted looking at screens all day? And if so, what are some habits you've developed to regulate your digital intake? God. Um, I mean, screen fatigue is is definitely a thing that I feel like happens to a lot of us. Um, one thing that I've been trying to do more often in the instances that I can is not take my laptop or phone into a meeting and write down um, my notes for a meeting. Ooh, analog. And, mm. Yeah, well, and just... Get away from a screen for 30 minutes or something when that opportunity provides itself. I also try not to look at my phone for at least a half an hour before I go to bed. Yeah, that's good. I Um, sleep at my desk. That's probably wow. like yeah. uh, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, co- <laughs> cooking is if, if you have an idea of what you're doing, cooking is a great way to get away from screens for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized yesterday I was on my laptop at work all day, and then I got home and I opened up my home laptop, and then I, I was like, "That's enough of that." Mm-hmm. I close it and then I just open up my phone and I'm right. yeah. at the same stuff. And I was like, "I shouldn't away. do this anymore." And I grab my switch. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> well, my, my advice is get a big dog, but because if you have a big dog, you can't look at a screen and, mm-hmm. and just the walk dog's the dog all in the way. You go right. flying so. Um, um, but yeah, it's uh, especially when you get older. Also, it takes a while to adjust your vision mm. after looking at something close and then looking at far. I get this like when playing a game like uh, Assassin's Creed, where the text or Witcher, where the text is really small, mm-hmm. and like you're answering a text message, and then you look at the screen, <laughs> it's and you're all like, blurry. Ah, yeah. uh-huh. Focus, yeah. <laughs> focus. Uh, Don Black asks. My question is. Are Ubisoft going to make a full Star Fox game now, considering how awesome Starlink mm. is? Oh, we kind of covered this earlier in the show. Yeah, I don't I think ho- so. I hope so. I don't, don't think they think would. So? No. I think uh, Ubi- Ubisoft, um, they, they, you know, people sometimes give them a lot of flack over, like, you know, the, the bugs in some of their, their older games. They like to innovate and create new brands, try them out, and if they don't work like a red steel, they just drop them. I think we'll get a port of the Wii U Star Fox game zero uh, Star Fox Zero before we, we get a new one. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. But I don't think Ubisoft I mean Ubisoft did a great job incorporating the mm-hmm. characters, but I, d- I don't think it's a good Star Fox game. So. I, I would respectfully not want to see Star Fox Zero return. I like where this Starlink stuff's going. I would like to see them just take that in, in the next step. I don't know. We'll see how well this sells. Yeah. Uh okay, last question. Uh hmm. Kai I'm sorry, Kylie Daniel asks Please rate Craig on the IGN review scale. Thanks. No decimal points. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's oh, right. True Craig I Harris I, fashion. No I decimal hate points. Decimal points. If you're ever confused, like if you go back into the uh, the IGN uh, review history, the IGN Pocket Channel had a zero to ten scale with yes. no half points. Oh yeah. No decimals, yeah. right? No, there and are so some, like that's why there's so many tens. Is that because why you I'm not. Like I'm not. 7.0? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to snitch, but there are some editors in history that just straight up. Ignored that and right. only went with like you know full full yeah. numbers. Yeah, and I won't say their names. Yeah, no, Craig Harris. There's some people. Yeah. Who I, I was forced into the point fives. Yeah, you forced uh, me to do point fives. Rude. <sighs> yeah, and so that's but I mean, like, that's the but system, honestly, man. it's like back in the, back in the day on the Game Boy, it's like what would make a seven point eight better than a seven point seven? I mean, like the it's it's silly. Like yeah. on a Game Boy. Tell that to Fran and double that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Craig, I I just met you. Uh, but so far, I think you're great. So I'm going to give you an 8.0. Nice. Yeah. I don't know if you're amazing, and I don't know if you're a masterpiece yet. I wouldn't yet, expect it. But, yeah. I'd give him an 8.8. 8. Mm-hmm. Oh, just oh, because you piss me because, off. Because you don't. Just to piss me <laughs> off. No, because you, you, want, you want to have something to strive for. Right? Uh, in, like what, in the sequel? Yeah. There's Craig no Harris such thing as a perfect person. And so, you know, 8.8 8 means you can move on. Yeah. But our scale doesn't, 10 out of 10 doesn't mean perfect. It means masterpiece. That's so. true. Well, Consider that. Okay. Craig, Craig, I've told, Craig you this be, I've told you this before, but you are the probably the, the person that is most responsible for getting me to where I am today just by the work you were putting out. And I was reading it as a little kid, and I was going, holy crap, you can do that. Uh, so I'm going to give you a 10 out of 10. Yeah, oh. Come here. Thank you. Uh, so I, I love your scale. hair. Craig, I, I, I won't be so cruel as to ask you to rate yourself. Oh. But I will say thank you very much for coming on the show today. It's, thank it's you. awesome. I really appreciate you like, coming up. I, I've only been hosting this show for a little while, but obviously like I've heard your name for years. I read your work when I was a kid as well, and so it's, it's really cool that and you're you s- in here. And you see my face in the 
pointing reaction. That's guy, true. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's absolutely. right. Yeah. So it's, it's it's a really cool opportunity for for us to have you into the show, and we hope we get to do it more often. Thank you. Yeah. I hope yeah. so too. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for joining me as well. I mean, you guys are here every week, so it's kind of old hat. Yeah, like mm-hmm. not as cool. I give as myself Greg. a six. <laughs> I give you a seven point five. Seven. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Seven yeah. Point five. Good, not great. Yeah, no. Rent, don't buy. There you go. And also, thank you out there for watching NBC. We are IGN's Nintendo show every Thursday at 3 p.m. on IGN.com and every Friday on YouTube at 3 p.m. Remember, you can always tune in and catch us at those times and make sure you stick around for next week's episode where you can... Get the thing. Get the thing. You're mm. too slow on that, man. I'm, that's the age thing. <laughs> Brian, I'd give you a spazzy face on Game Pro Scale. Beautiful. Ooh, yeah. That's my <laughs> <Yeah>. favorite. <laughs>